We're in event 26, AD 29. Jesus is likely still in Perea, that's considerably east of Jerusalem, uh, more than a day's journey likely. And um, he gets a message from a messenger that Lazarus is sick. Now we're gonna break this message uh, into two parts. Uh, not because it's so long or hard to uh, read through, but because of the incredible insight into human behavior and into the supernatural power, love, and understanding of Jesus. Uh, we're going to be looking at Lazarus. We're going to be looking at Mary and Martha, his sisters. We're going to be looking at the disciples and particularly we're going to look at Thomas. Uh, we're going to look at the very fact of Jesus' ability to raise the dead. Uh, these are incredible things and we see incredible insight into human nature. For Jesus was recently threatened to be stoned to death in Jerusalem. He's now out in the countryside and he's safe from those who wanted to stone him to death. And so when Jesus decides not to go immediately to Lazarus, we find the disciples somewhat relieved because they weren't in a hurry to go back to where they might be stoned to death. We come up with a lot of questions why did Mary and Martha wait so long to send for Jesus when they had seen him do so much healing? Why didn't they at least give him a warning that Lazarus wasn't looking good? Because by the time the messenger got to Jesus, Lazarus was already dead. Uh, so we know there's about a day's travel between Mary and Martha who were just outside of the uh, region of Jerusalem and it would have taken about a day's journey for him to get to Jesus to say Lazarus whom you love is sick now he loved Mary and Martha as well he'd been there many times he enjoyed them as much as anybody could enjoy extended family Jesus said the sickness was not unto death, but for the glory of God. What a strange thing to say, that anybody's sickness could be for the glory of God. Jesus, it says in verses five and six, loved very much Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. We find all of this in John chapter 11. And we find that Jesus, after hearing this word that Lazarus was sick, and even though we know as we read through this account and carry up the days and work out a calendar for it all, that Lazarus was already dead. Jesus stayed where he was two days longer. It doesn't say that he was real busy or that there were a lot of sick people that needed his attention or anything else. It just tells us that he stayed another two days. And after two days, Jesus says, let's go. <laughs> and now the real feelings of the disciples come out. 
And they said, we are just threatened to be stoned to death in Jerusalem. And now you're going back within a stone's throw of Jerusalem to Lazarus when you said this sickness was not unto death, but it was for the glory of God. So think about the emotions of the disciples. Think about the emotions of Mary and Martha having just sent out a messenger and by the time he reached Jesus, they're in the midst of doing Lazarus' funeral, wondering why Jesus didn't come if he was only a day away. Thomas says, let's go ahead and die with Jesus. Now, what does that say about Thomas? Uh, the disciples were afraid to go, uh, but Thomas says, let's go. He, he shows lack of faith in Jesus and the fact that he thinks he's going to die and that God's not going to protect Jesus or him. But he shows his courage and his loyalty and his love for Jesus. Jesus takes his one day journey and he tells his disciples before they leave, Lazarus has fallen asleep. Now that he was meaning that Lazarus was dead and they assumed that sleep was good. It meant that he was getting over whatever ailed him and that he was now resting well. And he had to come out and, and it must have seemed so strange to his disciples. No, Lazarus is dead. Don't you understand? Lazarus is dead. And then he goes on this one day journey. And when it's heard by Martha that Jesus is coming, she runs to him while Mary stays in the house. What was going on? Was Mary so angry that Jesus hadn't come to save her brother that she stayed in the house? Was she so grief stricken over the loss of her brother that she stayed in the house? Was she busy with all of the other mourners because she stayed in the house knowing Jesus would come to the house? Nevertheless, we see the first reaction of Martha as she comes to Jesus, and almost the first words out of her mouth are, my brother would not have died if you'd been here. Faith and disappointment, all in one phrase. Faith that if Jesus had been there, he would have been able to heal Lazarus and he wouldn't have died. Disappointment because Jesus didn't come and heal Lazarus and he did die. Can you see the real humanity in each of these people in this event in Jesus' life? But then Martha says something incredible. She says, but I know now even whatever you ask of God, he can do it. Now, I've preached this message at least six times. And I will gladly tell you the title every time. Even though I took this event in different ways and explained it in different ways, different truths that come from it. All the right words. Because Martha had all the right words. I don't like what's happened. I'm not happy about what happened, but I know even now, Lord, you can make it okay. Now that's incredible faith, at least in words. And, and so Jesus goes on and he meets Mary and Mary says basically the same thing. She falls at Jesus' feet. She shows her respect, she shows her love, but she says exactly what Martha has said. If you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Can you see all of the humanity of the disciples being afraid to go? Thomas being willing to go, but concerned that he's going to die and that Jesus is going to die. Can, can you see Mary and Martha both believing and yet not believing? And 
perhaps a little angry inside, or resentful, or disappointed that Jesus didn't come to save Lazarus. Well, we can do the timeline quite easily. A day's travel. Jesus delays two days, that's three. Jesus travels a day there, that's four. And Lazarus has been in the tomb four days. He must have died shortly after the messenger was sent. And now Jesus is in Bethany. He's come because he said the sickness is not unto death, even though Lazarus has died, but for the glory of God. What did he mean? Stay tuned till Monday. But in the meantime, consider the emotions. Consider the faith that appears to be in the words of Mary and Martha. Consider the fear that were in the disciples of going to Jerusalem where they might be stoned to death. And consider the words of Jesus. This death is not unto death, but is for the glory of God. That's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day. know for certain about salvation through the Roman road. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 5.8, but God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.6, for while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Romans 10.9, that if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. God bless you and have a great day.